Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm Calder Ness, your hostess with the mostess, and we're going to be doing episode 498. This episode, we're taking it back to a little fun segment we used to do called Generic Gallery. We're going to be taking a look at the deity keyword. Ooh, ah. This is episode 498. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Why should you care? Keywords. 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 So why should you care? Keywords. It's only game. Why do you have to be mad? Celebrity, police, past, and scientist, assassin, soldier, spy, tinker, tailor. No, they, they're not in there, but you know, you get it. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day and all the latest. Hero Click singles and steel products. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Code dial 5, D I A L 5, 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to buy Hero Clicks from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com and use code dial H10. Only works on select products. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Ooh, you know, styling, profiling. Absolutely. Absolutely. Want to hit us with what made you happy this week, my man? Yeah, wore my. Top goon shirt out for the first time <laughs> yesterday for lunch. Uh, but actually, yeah, yesterday for lunch was what made me happy. I uh, found a new restaurant in Exarban, and by found, I mean the kind of tentatively like friends with the owner. I wouldn't say like we're friends, but like I know of him, he knows of me, and he's owned the Momo station, like both of them, for quite a few years and so i've had a few chats with him just kind of back and forth and he invited me to his indian restaurant um mm. which is down in exarban just like the little uh neighborhood for those that aren't aware uh and man it was some really really good food and then on top of that when i i probably ordered like 20 some dollars worth of food or more and uh when it was time to pay, he said, no, it's on me. And so Whoa. that was super nice of him. He said, I'm a huge fan of Dial H, and I would love to comp your meal. No, that's not what he said at all. No <laughs> way. Yeah, I'm like, that would be, be awesome. But yeah, it was oh a my gosh. super cool atmosphere, really good uh, chai. Um, and yeah, I, I think it was, if it wasn't my first time having Indian food, it was like only the second, because I don't eat Indian oh, food sure. often. Uh, they need to crank up the spice a little for me. But other than that, it was really Ooh, good. Ooh, all right. But, yeah. A little spicier for the top goon is what you're saying? Yeah, a little spicier for top goon. <laughs> he can handle the heat. Uh, yeah. yeah, the name of the place is uh, Saffron. Saffron, I guess. Saffron. Okay. Saffron. Urban Indian Kitchen. And uh, it's right next to one of my other favorite restaurants, which is Herb Saint. It's a... Uh, Gosh, what is that one? Uh, it's like a Creole kind of like place. Ooh, okay. There's some spice. Talking about some yeah. spice stuff. That Creole stuff can be oof, pretty, pretty heavy. Yeah, it can. Gambit, uh, I don't know, Gambit and his fam down there. They really, they really like their spices. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was mostly food that made me happy this week. I got to see some family that I didn't see over Christmas, so that was also nice. Um, but other than that, yeah, just breaking into the new year. Right on. I, I always love it when we get a return to form Simeon food. What made you happy? It's always, always good to see. Got man's uh, got to eat. Man, hey, yo. Man's got to eat. Man's got to eat. And, you know, might as well have a good time while he's doing it. Can't all be whatever gets you by, you know. I know we're living out here in Casey's country. Can't always be gas station pizza. <laughs> Sometimes no, you gotta have no. some finer, some finer things in life, some real cuisine, you know. Uh, right on. Uh, you know what made me happy this week? It was the live stream that we did Saturday. It was such a blast. If you listener haven't seen it yet, or I should say, no, yeah, I've seen it. I was about to say, I'm so you saying listener, watcher, viewer, blah blah blah. But anyways, yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you go check that out. It's public. It's on our channel right now. I think it's close to like 
four hours long, but in it we give away all the Clixie Awards for best favorite, all that stuff of 2023. We had some upset victories. We had some live uh, readings of t- different categories from a few guest speakers, a few guests we had. We had about three, which is really cool to help announce categories this year. And we just overall had a blast. We kind of spent the night reminiscing about the year of 2023 for Hero Clicks and for Dial H. We had record numbers on this live stream. I, like... It was not far off from triple digits there for a while. And by not far off, I do mean like 15, 16-ish away. But still, uh, roughly 80-something people at one point in time during that live stream were watching, which is massive. These are great, great numbers for just even hero clicks, not only for us, for a just hero clicks live stream. And looking at a lot of the metrics from that made me so happy to see there were a ton of people that were excited to do this like year end review episode. And I'm glad it was just a smash success because it was a fun night. It was fun to reminisce. It was fun to look forward to the new year. And it was just a great old time interacting with the chat. They had great energy. It was fun throughout the entire night. And yeah, it was just a freaking blast. And I cannot wait to do the Clixies again next year. It's really been something that the last two years, it's really evolved into more than just Simi and I doing the it just on the on the episode, on the podcast, because that's how it had been since, you know, forever, for 10 years, you know. So these last two years being like these big special live streams has been a ton of fun. So, yeah, thanks to the community for making that special. Thanks to, obviously, Simeon and Ian for all their hard work to also make it special. And it was a ton of fun. I know... It was a it was a lot of work, even though doing the Google form made it a lot easier. It was still uh I mean Simeon counted a lot of, we all counted some categories, but Simeon counted like the most categories up, and that's like it's a time it takes a lot of time to do that. So yeah. <laughs> glad we were able to yeah, get her done. There's not the problem is there's not like a better way. I would I almost wonder if there is a better way. Um just where there more there'd be more consistency with like the naming because that was where you know people would say that's spider that's where it hurt the where most they meant prime spider-man or they meant you know like 043 b spider-man you know um because if they would have all said if more people would have been like like consistently saying 043 b prime spider-man or just saying like prime spider-man or instead of people saying Scott Porter, uh, and if they would have said Scott Porter white shirt, Scott Porter black shirt, or, you know, set number, and then Scott Porter, et cetera, et cetera. But just because there's so many different ways that people yeah. go by these figures, instead of them looking, like, at first, when there was only 100 votes, um, like 100 people had registered their votes, it was a really nice bar graph, <laughs> uh, and you could just count them up super easy. But then as time went on, and there were all these different answers, and even just slight variations on the same answer, it just said, okay, butts to the bar graph. We literally can't do this anymore. It'd be too much. And yeah. here's just listing them all out. So there's it's a lot of votes funky. where it was like a single person voted for, you know, NOT number zero, whatever, this character and then the next person would be like, they capitalized the N on N-O-T. And so that yeah, kind of doesn't different. It. Like, the fact that it was caps uh, sensitive was insane. Yeah. But yeah, there was a lot of that. I think there would be a way, uh, maybe if we team up with some sort of like uh, units website and we find a way oh. to like link dials or oh. I don't know, something. There's got to be an easier way to where somebody could just like, click on figures or scroll yeah. to like find I don't know something but either way it, it wasn't like it wasn't like five days worth of work it was just like one kind right of it, was, it was just so. like a count and scroll scroll type scrolls type whatever oh add a one out of two to whatever keep going up um but yeah looks this was great it was an awesome event thank you everybody that was able to join in we have like no news <laughs> this week and that has been roughly the past couple of weeks so we still have a really fun episode for you guys planned really quickly but since there is no news i'm gonna take this time to get my plugs out of the way so we can just jump right into the bulk of our kind of team building themed episode here so really quickly episode 500 is coming up this is 498 which those super sleuths in you know we got two weeks left until 500 um this is 
10-ish years of Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is 500 podcasts. It's going to be a massive event. It's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, and the way to make it even more fun is if you join the Patreon. $5 and up gets you access to the Discord. On the Discord, we have a very special questions tab where you can ask questions not to Simi and Ian and I, uh, but to some special guests that we're going to have on the show. And it is a, a privilege for Patreon members to be able to ask these questions. And there have been some pretty good ones sent already there. So I urge people that are Patreon members and listening and aren't Patreon members and listening to please go do that. But if you're not a Patreon member and you don't want to join the Patreon, what you can do to also help the episode is write into us at dialhforheroclix at gmail.com or dialhforheroclix podcast on Facebook. Message that page and you guys can send us as many questions you want. Simeon, Ian, and myself are all going to be on episode 500. We can do kind of a Reddit style ask us anything. If you were curious uh, who likes long socks or short socks, you know, who uh, likes milk and sugar with their coffee, blah, 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 stuff like that, you know or just like what was your first hero clicks piece you ever owned all sorts of questions anything that you can think of to ask us by all means feel free to type out 20 30 questions um mostly character specific to ourselves or something that you could answer that we can answer um because we want to have a fun time and i feel like you guys have a great chance to get to know us here you've already gotten a great feel for what we like what we don't like uh things we enjoy things we do for hobbies and whatnot but this is a real super open ask us anything have a good time kind of an episode and we're really looking forward to that so episode 500 coming soon everywhere podcasts are found be on the look at it uh look for it in the past we've done live streams it's not going to be a live stream on youtube it is going to be an audio specific form and we're very excited to kind of use some creativity within those limits to bring a audio specific form of episode 500 100. Anything else you want to say about 500, Simeon? That was pretty much my big spiel that I had to add. I think that hits pretty much everything, yeah. Perfect. We're going to try and, uh, a little bit of return to form on some skits, audio skits, a little bit of return to form on some uh, interesting stuff that we're interviewing, doing like things like that, potentially. I, don't, I guess I don't Yeah. Kind of depends on uh, the timing, but yeah. It'll be some things are yeah. Regardless, it'll be a fun episode, and uh, I think I don't know. I think it might be a long one. I think we might make it a long one. You can always pause it and return to it. So like, why not? Yeah. Why not make it a long one? Put like an intermission. Be like, all right, if you only listen to a podcast at an hour at a time, this is now the one hour mark. Feel free to go about your day or whatever. Yep. We'll we'll see you later on your commute back from work. Yeah. Or and yeah. For that one guy who drives with his windows down and, <laughs> I don't know, apparently can't hear us. I'll crank it extra loud that episode just for you. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank goodness. Thank goodness we'll get it figured out. Uh, but all right, we're going to jump into one of my favorite segments we've done on the show, and that is Generic Gallery. Why should you care? Keywords. Why should you Keywords. Why should you care? Keywords. Why should you care? Keywords. Why should you care? Keywords. It's only a game. Why do you have to be mad? Celebrity, police, cast, and scientist, assassin, soldier, spy, tinker, tailor. No, they, they're not in there, but you know, you get it. Generic gallery is the part of the show where we take a generic keyword. Yes, I know. All keywords are keywords now, but we know which ones are generic and which ones are named in our heart of hearts now, don't we? Uh, and we're going to build a Silver Age and a Modern Age theme. Uh, Simeon, this week, you are going to be building a pulp team. Is that right? Yes. Some fun um, pulpy goodness. Yeah, so it's a little hard to make a, a pulp team because... Uh, tends to be a f higher rarity for deity figures Very true. They, that's right we are doing deity this week yeah, I, yeah. I said at the, i said at the top of the show i didn't reiterate right. but yeah the key uh, the keyword this week is the deity keyword yeah so just to go over a couple quick deities so you know kind of what we would typically be working with um for this pulp we're going with modern so the rotation means no Marvel Studios Disney Plus, which is sad because that would have added four figures, which is pretty solid. But uh, some figures that are deities that I can't use for pulp uh, is like Chase Annihilation, Legacy Apocalypse, um, anything from the X-Men X of Swords storyline, Organized Play Kit, which is only three figures, but still. Uh, anything from Avengers Forever that would have the deity keyword, none of those are pulp legal. Uh, all but two things from Batman Team Up, 
So like that's three figures, but still. Um, and then yeah, there's nothing from Beyond Spider Man has deity and is pulp legal. Nothing from Avengers 60th has deity and is pulp legal. So it is a self selecting kind of keyword because you want it to be a higher rarity because it's a cool character usually. So these are like your Mephistos, your Thors, your you know Camo is, is deity. So things like that. But still pretty easy to make a deity themed team in pulp. So starting off, I think one of the pulp things that I'm most excited to start playing with is from Notorious. It's Black Adam, Teth Adam himself. Uh, this guy's a ton of fun. And playing him at 100 points, you get the two clicks where he's got invincible and then friendly characters within range and line of fire can use mastermind, but only to choose Black Adam, regardless of adjacency. He has that on click. Technically, his first click of his 100-point line, which starts on 5, and on click 8, he also has that invincible power. Let's you mastermind to him, which helps trigger his living lightning trait, and that's when Black Adam uses the Mystic's team ability. He also deals 1 penetrating damage to each opposing character within 3 squares of the attacker, which includes the attacker, so they take 2. Everyone within 3, um, that's an opposing character takes one so good way to dish out a ton of damage he also has outwit top dial he destroys blocking he has charge quake some good uh he's a flyer good uh just i don't know tactical advantages all around he can carry people up he can burst through terrain uh he can outwit and then he also kind of packs his own little punch in a lot of ways so he is starting off the team next up is Necron. So normally, I think in Constructed, you're going to see this guy played around 40 points, but because the way that points work out, it was actually more beneficial to start him at 75 than start him at 40. So he is only going to be two clicks from his top dial, which means he only has to hit or hit and KO once or hit twice uh, to be at top dial with his 12 for four with penetrating damage on either close or range but if you don't know what necron does by now you should definitely look him up he has the cosmic energy team ability he has black lantern core deity herald and monster he has the generate grave hindering terrain markers and then he is the specific black lantern core member that has the trait that lets friendly black lantern core characters heal above their starting lines so he is the one that is needed for the Black Lanterns to really do a whole lot. Uh, and he himself has traded Steel Energy, but can use it with close or range. And then when an opposing character is KO'd after resolutions, you can heal a friendly character with the Black Lantern Core keyword two clicks. If this wasn't Highlander, if Pulp wasn't Highlander, I think you would just spam Necrons. I feel like that's pretty solid option. Uh, but on his 75-point starting line, he has Sidestep, Psychic Blast, 4 damage, 11 attack. He also has Exploit and Invulnerability. And then he gets to free generate a hindering terrain marker within range and line of fire. So he's normally going to be putting that under himself, which will make him a 19 from ranged attacks. And yeah, he's dishing out a ton of damage. He's probably selecting one figure to just get KO'd each turn. But yeah, Necron spitting out terrain which really helps the next guy. That's Blackheart from Wheels of Vengeance. He has free, choose up to two adjacent friendly characters with a monster or mystical keyword, place Blackheart in a square of hindering terrain within range, then place the chosen character adjacent to Blackheart. So this is like a, a five square teleport that is considered placing, not considered moving, um, not considered carrying. So Blackheart will be able to do this with both uh, Black Adam and Necron because they have Black Adam has Mystical and Necron has Monster Keyword. Um, it's kind of like a way to sneak TK on the team without actually being able to use TK. So that's basically the role that this 50-point Blackheart is filling, and it's pretty solid. He also has Stealth, Pulse Wave, he has Empower, which I don't think is going to happen a whole lot on this particular team. I think Enhancement would be better, but I'll take what I can get when it comes to boosting uh, damage, even if it is for only close attacks. 
And then he has a second trait that is Brimstone, and that's his Fire Smoke Terrain Marker trait. So at the beginning of the turn, you can generate a Fire Smoke Terrain Marker in a square within range. Again, that's five squares. Um, and then at the beginning of your next turn, even if this is lost, you deal one damage to each character up occupying that marker then remove that marker so he can place one at the beginning of the turn he can then use his free to move to it or necron can use his free to make a grave hindering terrain marker and blackheart can move to that and kind of zoop necron behind him then necron can use his own sidestep and things like that it's actually pretty mobile for those three characters black adam having charge definitely gets him up into the fray quicker and then finally rounding out the team is gonna be from batman team up number 044 wonder woman so she has the jla team mm. ability and the wonder woman team ability and we're running her at 75 points so justice league i don't remember i don't think justice league was updated for batman team up but that means that she's going to have a plus one attack most of the time. Not always, but most of the time she'll have a plus one attack from her JLA. And then she'll have a plus one to super senses from her Wonder Woman team ability. And she has that her whole dial on the first click of the 75 point line. She has ESD, invincible, and super senses. So she's a 20 from range. She's a 50-50 super senses. And she's got invincible. Really stout defense. She has... Uh, a special attack power that blades, claws, fangs, and incapacitate with two lightning bolts. She has hypersonic. Uh, she has the golden lasso, which is when she hits. After resolution, she can use mind control as free, but only to target a hit character. The really nice thing about this is you can multi-target, deal all damage to one, mind control the other, so you don't have to worry about like KOing the figure that you're trying to mind control after the effect, effect or whatever. You can just multi-target choose to deal all your damage to one the one really bad thing about her 75 point line is she has close combat experts so it kind of makes up for it but she does have just a printed two damage so she's Ooh, a, a, yeah. effectively like a 13 for three but like for close attacks at least she can be that but it still just feels kind of it's kind of bad um and then if you decide to if you want a little bit extra money, I think I'm pretty sure that team up cards work in pulp, but I might be wrong. I know it's figures I'm pretty only. Sure they, I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, because it is just an alternate card for a figure that's on the team. So I, I assume they work. But uh, either way, if it works, um, it gives safeguard, outwit, and opposing probability control uh, to all friendly characters that have the deity keyword, and then. Uh, it's, yeah, it's safeguard outwit and pro opposing probability control unless they are targeted by an opposing character with a higher point value or that has the deity keyword. Uh, the safeguard outwit is only going to help this Wonder Woman and Blackheart. Those are the only two that don't already have safeguard outwit. But uh, the uh, safeguard opposing prob control is pretty big, especially since there is no prob on this particular team, at least not mm. top dial. Uh, but yeah, this... Uh, Wonder Woman packs a pretty decent punch, and she is also my value corner piece of the week. Right on. So, I will say, she is coming in about half the price of this team-up card. So, if you're not able to use this team-up card, if you just don't want to pay for it, or uh, yeah, don't want to use it, you will still have Protected Outwit on two of the characters on this team. You won't have the full effect, but... Uh, this Wonder Woman still, I think, is still like the right call for the team because she has flight, she has hypersonic, and more so than anything, she has that uh, basically double tap with mind control, which is pretty killer. But if you don't want to use that and you just want to pick up this Wonder Woman herself, what do you think, Calder? What do you think this figure's worth, this 75-point beat stick? I do like her a lot. She's one of my favorite pieces from like the Batman team up set. I really like the uh, the deity theme team team up card with her too. I feel like a rare can sometimes be anywhere between like four and five bucks. Almost like four dollars is what I'm thinking. Okay, okay, not too bad. Okay. 
Not too I bad. will say she's the cheapest figure on this specific team, coming in at only three dollars and forty nine oh. cents. Okay, right on. Yeah. So not too far off, but yeah, uh, okay. obviously Necron I think is uh, getting a lot of use in constructed. A lot of people wanted to build with him, so he's a little bit higher. Black Adam's just a really cool character, so he's obviously a little bit higher. And then I don't have a bead on Blackheart, but I think he's also going to be yeah that free movement. Spendy, some spendy boys. Yeah. yeah, he's good. But right on. I do. I like this team, though. And like giving it just like global outwit and opposing prob like protection, unless they're like higher points or whatever, is really good. And I think it's a pretty safe bet, especially in like a pulp. Yeah world where it feels like a lot of things are like running cheaper like she herself for 75 points she's like doing so much and then there's not a lot of stuff that's like 75 plus like you're playing it like black adam you know so i like this i dig this it's also like you don't want to hit black adam because he's gonna do that like crazy mystics thing um you kind of want to focus on necron but he's just gonna heal up if like if he's not already on click one by the time you get around to hitting him He'll probably be there soon. Uh, Blackheart's probably the easiest character to take down. And then again, you're ta you'll get Mystic's feedback. And he's not like one of your biggest threats. So this team is just hard to pick like a target right off the bat. Wonder Woman, if you're using that team up, it's really hard to get around that special defense power. So, yeah, it's, it's not completely ideal. I do wish I had some top dial... Uh, probability control some perplex stuff like that but you do have empower you have outwit uh necron gives you penetrating damage up top and then if he gets knocked down he also has the prop lower dial so there's some options but i think it's mostly just uh don't let your opponent prob and don't let your opponent like outwit and uh just hit him really hard a bunch yeah right on so my DD theme team, I am building a theme haha, team. Um, so it's going to be Silver Age. It's going to be Highlander, just like how Pulp's Highlander. And then also uh, everything on the forest has to share the printed keyword deity, including Sideline. Uh, we, were, we were having some trouble with theme last time I did this. But this one, we kept it simple. We kept it safe. We have three characters on this team because uh, we have some really high point high point boys on this on this group here so first up just kind of as the nice support figure of the team we have cersei from the wonder woman set she's got stealth mind control for her special speed power but most importantly she's here for her telekinesis and probability c control she has for her first three clicks and i'm also going to give her the sinestro core ring to have a little power action construct drop happening uh potentially just for some barriers early on in the game and then also her having perplex and having like pro perplex tk feels pretty good for 60 points of the team so that's cersei she's also got injustice league and mystic so it's going to hurt a little bit to try to take her out of the game which is always nice <laughs> And then one of my, like, two main attackers, uh, I have Camo. I'm full aboard the Camo train. So we got our Shark God here. He's great. He has great tempo, which is super necessary for a team that only has three characters. So he's constantly making that bystander every single turn. That bystander can move a full 16 squares and attack. So it's got full map reach, which is great. Camo, I always feel pretty confident about moving him up a little bit and just letting him kind of hang out there. People are kind of scared to like whiff a bunch of attacks against Camo or base him because he's a lot to chew through. So I think it's always great to just be able to like plop him out there. You gonna try to deal with him? Okay, no. Well, he's gonna send a fish your way, and then he's also got his own little like charge happening. And then if you pick up a heavy object, you know maybe some giant reach coming your way. So Camo is just a beast. Probably could go on about him forever, but Camo's awesome, and I love playing the guy. So. The last figure on my team, and he is my hidden gem, is the only character that's actually silver. Well, I guess no, Cersei's Silver Age. I only have one modern character on this team, so it's just Camo. But my Silver Age, like, value corner, hidden gem, not value corner, excuse me, you did that. Hidden gem is going to be the Flash, God of Death. Ooh. When he first came out, a lot of people really, really, really wanted Flash, God of Death to work. And there was a lot of people, like, pushing for Flash, God of Death. And I feel like... Where we're at now, I think he might work the best. 
So is Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls. Yeah, Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls. Okay. Whole, whole Flash yeah, got it. It was like the so, god of the gods of apocalypse Justice League yeah. edition. So Flash got a death. We're also giving him Bucky's arm because we had five points. So yeah. let's we'll just run down his top dial here. So four damage, nothing. Nineteen defense, super senses, good stuff. Eleven attack, precision strike, good stuff. Fourteen speed with hypersonic Yeesh. speed. I really, I'm a real big fan. What's, what's the real size of a map of nowadays? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> dude. So 16 squares. He's got full map reach all on his own. Uh, and if you want to like kind of play it safe that first turn, you can just move up a little bit, barrier with like stop sign or something with Cersei, uh, and then like TK him up next turn to get a little more wiggle room. But I feel like giving him Bucky's arm, now he's a 12 for 5. If maybe a Cersei perplex makes him a 13 for 5. Hypersonic up, he bashes you pretty heavy. Kamo sends in the shark. Kamo maybe jumps in there. Uh, there's a lot of good. And that's just his stats. He's got two traits, which I... I'm a huge fan of, and this was like this trait is like the main reason people were really playing him a lot. So, his God of Death trait is opposing characters within six squares and lower points can't be healed. I think That's in the world of Carnage Surfer, in everyone. the world of like Prime Spider, yeah, but it's pretty much everybody. I honestly, yeah, I feel like Kamo is one of your most expensive main attackers, honestly, and. Yeah, like him being 125 points, pretty much everyone is going to be in this modern age era is going to be less points than this guy. And saying it, basically no one within six can heal is great. Keep in mind, like when Karn Surfer is doing his little range attacks, he has to be within six if he's going to attack Flash God of Death in order to try to heal up from his steel energy. Uh, same thing, unless they're doing something wacky with Spider-Man, he's typically right in your face, you know, um, punching you so if they try to do any healing stuff with his symbiote blah 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 he's not going to be able to because he's going to take that one unavoidable damage from subconscious crime fighting so i think flash god of death just like hurts a lot of healing and there's a ton of healing around here right now the scott porter healing all this stuff so i really really like that trait and six squares just means so much more on these small maps you know in a good spot that's 12 ish squares in the map which is massive you know if he's like plopped right in the middle so that's just I don't know. It's so good. Like nowadays, this is just so much better than it was on a, you know, 24 by 16 map. So that's his first trait. His second trait is a little steel energy. When an opposing character is KO'd, after resolutions, you heal Flash God of Death one click. If he KO'd the character and the character was 75 points or more, you also remove a token from him. That's like literally only if you kill like Prime Spider Man or a few other pieces. There's very few above 75. They're seeing a ton of crazy play right now. Um, but I just this is just a neat little thing, just to let some heal. Got a little steel energy. I will say, Flash is a little scary. You do not want this guy to be hit. I feel like you'll probably burn a lot of perplexes of Cersei's into his defense, uh, and maybe try not to just leave him totally all the way out there. Probably try to poke and prod them with Camo a bit, so Flash can do more back and forth with his hypersonic versus go all the way out there and hit. Uh, because the dude's got six clicks of life. Just has a 19 Super Senses top dial, which is still a really good defense. Um, but with no stop clicks and only being six clicks long and not having a reducer top dial, it's a little scary. But again, I just really like his counter ability. I like his really big movement. I think if you play him smart, you can kind of get him in some nice safe pockets around the map uh, and let Camo be your guy that's like trying to absorb more damage or getting up in their face. So that's my... That is my hidden gem. I feel like people have kind of forgotten about this guy in silver, and I think I think he's worth revisiting now. Another thing to mention is he is uh, Justice League, and that got better, so he probably will be like a 13 yeah. or 14 when he's hitting, if you choose a team ability with Justice League. And then Quintessence is what he has, which is just old cosmic energy. is going to give him willpower and protect it out with, which is also super helpful in making his dial go a long way. So making an attack every single turn. Camo also has cosmic energy. This team can kind of just keep going, going, going if we get a string of, like, kind of lucky rolls. But I think this is kind of a fun team. Don't get me wrong. It's an expensive team. Uh, it's an old chase. I don't know what Flash out of death is really going for. Maybe he's, like, 30, 40 bucks. I can't imagine he's too spending. Uh, he um, was the one that was the longest holdout, but I he don't was. know what he is now. That's, yeah. I remember um, I almost bought, uh, somebody made a like custom figure where it was painted like flash got a death but it was a much cheaper sculpt oh cool. of flash and they put like the correct dial and printed off like the card 
So you could basically get like a very nice proxy for like thirty dollars at the time. That is actually kind of sweet. And so yeah, that was that was probably months after he came out, still pulling quite a bit. Uh, let's see, Flash God of Death. Let's only looking at sold. We don't want we don't want to see what people are asking for. We want to see what people have sold it for. And it's going about sixty six, sixty five. Okay, a little more than I thought. Still not uh, not as bad as I thought it was going to be, I guess. So, yeah. makes sense. He's cool. I mean, he's Barry Allen. Super popular character, fun alternate version, kind of fringe piece. But that's team. I like. I really like Flash God of that. I, like, never owned one. But I've always been like, yeah, I wish people would make him work. And, like, now revisiting it, I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe he could. I don't know if this is necessarily the team for that. But off rip, I was like, this could be kind of fun. I like Flash God of Death. But... That is the generic gallery this week, DD keyword. If you guys liked any of our teams or are going to try them in pulp or theme, go ahead and let us know. You can send us an email. You can send us a message on Facebook. Uh, how would you build your deity team? Also, send that our way. If you want to build a deity team for Silver Age, if you want to build a deity team for pulp, go ahead and let us know what yours would look like. We would absolutely appreciate that. Uh, but all right, Simeon, we're going to go ahead and jump to some listener questions. There are dozens of us. This one comes from the Discord. Already did my big old whole spiel about that. All sorts of great stuff's on the Discord. All sorts of great stuff's on the Patreon. Consider supporting us. We greatly appreciate it. Is on Bill, super fan. Last year's super fan is on Bill. Of course, we crowned a new super fan, which is Tristan, this year. But is on Bill asks, using a dice popper at the table keeps the dice from rolling off the table. The pop is very satisfying. Or is it too dorky for hero clicks? So this is like a old school board game. How yeah, they build like in that sorry. little plastic. Sorry, I think sorry. Yeah, it has. I, I sorry has one like made in like the middle of the board game. What games come with the dice popper? I, you know what? I, I kind of mess with the idea. I think if it's allowed, you might have to even ask a judge if they would let you use a dice popper. Honestly, I've but never I never once seen a dice popper. No, uh, never. have like dice land on each other or land on like an edge somehow so like there there would be very little um cocked dice or like and zero i think should be zero huh. table right dice. none yeah nothing landing on a piece nothing whatever i kind of mess with the idea i kind of like the idea of using a dice popper at hero clicks i don't know i feel like the the, the only bad thing is gonna be the pop click click that noise is might get annoying after a while, but it's no less annoying than the rattle of like a dice cup. You need a and single, I know I'm the a that single D six one two. Oh, you would need a single. One. You would need a single. They got to make a single D six somewhere, right? I I guarantee there is one. Got Like be. I guarantee that that's something that you can buy online somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. I I I like the idea of the dice popper. I actually I think I kind of mess with that. I think it'd be kind of fun. Like, yeah, it doesn't go all over the place. They're not going to fall out of the table. Um, you know, it was like one way to roll dice that I thought I would enjoy. But then once I finally did it, I like didn't like it all. It was those dice trays. I thought I was going to like, oh, yeah, I just pop them in there. I don't like it at all. feels weird. Yeah. Got to throw my aim my dice in the little dice full tray. I just I really thought I would like that. But I'm like, oh, no, I don't like this at all. I, I wasn't messing with that. Yeah, um, feels you know, weird. Same like. Thing. It feels it, odd. It, yeah. It's something you have to keep in the back of your mind. Otherwise, you stop doing it. And yeah. then, like, yeah, what's the point of the tray? But it definitely, you'll be, like, mid-thought. Like, all right, I got to do this step, this step, this step. And then one of those steps has to be rolling into this dice tray. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, also don't forget, toss them in the dice tray. So, I don't know. The popper idea, you know, listener, again, right in. Let us know. Do you like the idea of using a dice popper? Are you so young you don't know what a dice popper is? You might have to look it up. Uh, they haven't made board games with dice poppers in a while. Not in the real nerdy board game sense. More of the generic Walmart Target board game aisle. Yeah. Have a I few think board I, I remember poppers. there being a like more travel version of Monopoly. It wasn't as many oh, okay. loose pieces and one of the things was like dice in a little popper. So like there was a lot of uh, 
mid to late 90s there was a lot of like miniaturizing for like car rides and travel like board games that was just like a good way to lose a lot of tiny pieces and stuff but there was a lot of miniaturization of stuff and almost exclusively you would get dice that were in a popper because oh sure yeah no one's gonna keep track the travel right the travel idea of it is yeah that's gonna be tough so speaking really quick of monopoly and this is so off i don't want to get us too much on a tangent but there was a mr beast video recently not gonna get too much into it but basically he trapped people in this thing for like 100 days you could leave whenever you wanted to but you're trapped there for 100 days if you made it all the way you got like five hundred thousand dollars, right like that was the whole deal um one of the things he says you can buy for ten thousand dollars, so he stops in every once in a while and he says, "Yeah, ten thousand bucks can get you a TV and some movies or blah 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 blah." One of them was like just Monopoly, and I was All like, the "Games to ten, yeah, dude." If you would have said, oh, "Give me," and in in this scenario where I have literally nothing to occupy my mind with, would I spend ten thousand dollars of Monopoly? Absolutely not. Like I would be livid to even be like, "Really, of all board games, you're gonna make me have to." Ugh, that's my choice is ten thousand dollars for playing the monopoly now i i was so happy they like said not to do it because i've I, been livid if they would have paid ten thousand dollars for monopoly i i pay ten thousand dollars for monopoly to cease to exist you know like not <laughs> not play it for the next 50 days for my only source of entertainment you know give me like literally any other board give me a br- oh dude all i could think of too for that challenge was like man if you gave me like one or two double-sided clicks maps in like a case of any set that came out recently i'm good <laughs> you know like the poor other person you're trapped in there with you just teach them how to play hero clicks like i'm like, like yeah they're like i don't like superhero like just pretend like it's not here you know what you don't like superheroes just start like tearing the figures off the base like you're still gonna play yeah. look it's, I will it's whoever you. use your imagination you know it could be anybody here, you know, like superheroes play Wheels of Vengeance, you like monsters and stuff. Boom, zombie team, whatever. You know, like, yeah. Uh, I was, dude, like watching that. I was like, man, if yeah. I had hero clicks, I'd honestly, I'd be like, all right, trapped in a room. If I had my hero clicks collection, I was trapped in a room with somebody else played hero clicks, and like you got five hundred, we each got two hundred fifty thousand dollars by the end of it. I'd be like, oh sweet, I can finally play some of these pieces. Cool. I'm sure after a few weeks, the setting of not seeing my family, the real world, or whatever, whatever else would set in. But I was like. Man, I would love to do that. Or, like, trap me in a room with, like, movies and comic books where I can finally read a stack of comics I've been neglecting for however long. Or, like, yeah. hero clicks that I just don't no, like you, play. You can up. pay $10,000 of your potential prize earnings, but instead of comics, you get to read online fan fiction of comics. Ooh, ooh. That is your only source of entertainment for $10,000. I would still take it. I've I've read I some good feel, fan fiction out over the years. I there's some real like bad you, stuff, but there's also some real to, good stuff. You have to, right? You'd be like, you know what? Let's see what the creative minds of the everyday man has to, <laughs> has to offer. Yeah. The everyday person, <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. But yeah, I just thought I was like, so just mentioning Monopoly just made me think about that. I was like, jeez. I thought it was no, wild. Okay. Yeah, and like I, I don't have, I didn't watch it like much of the video. I just saw clips, but there was the one, might have been the same people that you're that you saw. Um, they were living off of like canned chicken and oh, tuna yeah. or something for like a while. It was like day like eight of living off of like canned food, and um, they bring in like a private chef, and he's like, for fifty thousand dollars, you have this private chef for like two meals a day and you get to tell them whatever you want that day and like you get that food and i was like this is like day eight i think in real life hiring a private chef for 92 days two meals a day would cost more than fifty thousand. i know i I feel like that's an actual good deal not like you don't want it to cut into your prize money and stuff but like i feel like that's an actual good deal just in real life but they did not they said no and i was like wow i'd I genuinely don't think I could say no to that. You're saying like one tenth of my money for actual good food for like the rest of my stay here. Yeah, that was the one where I was like, wow. Yeah. I really, I'm not as strong as these people. That one I couldn't believe they didn't take. The the one I was really surprised was they couldn't turn the lights off in the room like at all. And so, and I know this is a Hero Host podcast. I'm so sorry, listeners. 
Uh, but one was like just the ability to turn the freaking lights off and have like nice beds. And I was like, man, like sleeping lights on is like near impossible. Being able to like turn them off, have a nice bed, I might do, I might do that the next yeah. eighty days. But yeah, it just Mr. it's we'll almost get Mr. Like a Boston fun... HeroClix someday. Uh, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get him in here. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta teach him how to play HeroClix, and he'll be like, I made this Tesla into HeroClix, and now I'm in HeroClix, and I'm better than scott yeah. porter or here i am with scott porter we have to be buried underground for 14 days and play hero clicks or something weird i don't know but it'd be kind of fun i would take him <laughs> i take i take but i take mr beast hero clicks oh geez yeah I'm going somewhere from the meat canyon perspective where he's oh, gonna like adopt a child from overseas raise them on only hero clicks he won't send them to school he'll just like hire tutors to teach them like elite hero click strategy and imagine if turn 16 to earn their freedom they have to win worlds what if in like you break you raise a kid but their only literature is like the pac <laughs> oh, the no. rule book hero clicks cards and they're just like you t- <laughs> you don't let them speak with any actual humans outside of hero clicks like, yeah dude they, so and they so go to they're talk just... to somebody <laughs> I would like to occupy this square. <laughs> like, okay. I have oh, a fire to your hot dog stand. Hey, why are May you I... adjacent to me right now? <laughs> why am I what? Like, why are you adjacent to me right now? Like, can you break away? Like, can you sidestep away and give me some space? Like, why are you adjacent to me? Oh, like, no. Why am I next to you? Huh? That'd be, that'd be so funny. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Jeez. Yes, dystopian futures aside, and horrible ways to raise your children aside. Dial H uh, pranks that's... people of Walmart. Only speaking in PAC terms. Edition. Oh, jeez. I've seen some videos. Like, those are, ugh. Yeah. Truly wild. Truly, truly wild. Oh, gosh. That's all we got for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know what keywords you've been building with recently. Let us know what you're excited about for 2024. We only got... What do we know of? Three sets so far? We got Time Masters, Massive got Time. We had Deadpool thing. Weapon X. We know and about we got Deadpool Weapon Disney X. Plus. Uh, yeah, Disney, Disney Plus, Plus. next Don't. phase. Um, and next then we, phase. we know a couple iconics. We know Sherlock. We know Kong. I don't know if we have dates for them, but we, we know they're coming out. And then uh, first appearance, Wolverine said March. I remember that one from the timeline. Yeah. Um, at least that's what they said back. Gosh, that was at Nationals. We get, uh, so. we get roughly what? We get like five sets a year, something like that. We get roughly like five sets a year. So we have still like two yeah. unknown sets going into this year. I want to say it was the Hero Clicks for Huntington's live stream announced what the last set was going to be because it had the legacy card for Iron Man, I want to say. Oh, I want to say right. that's how we learned about Wheels of Vengeance. So like, yeah. maybe that's when we get to learn about potentially the next two sets but they're pro- probably both marvel i wouldn't hold, hold our breath for another double dc year i'm pretty sure that was just because dc wasn't any in uh 2022 but yeah we got good sets coming up so let us know also you, you guys if you want to write in what are you excited about this year the iconics the sets all of that yeah and if you want to pick up some of those Ooh. those sets those iconics get some pre-orders in maybe uh you should go to coolstuffinc.com where you can find the latest hero clicks singles and sealed products use code dial five to save five percent off when you do so and uh right now they've got an end of the year sale so they've got all kinds of things on sale they've got a zotter sanon on sale they've got gosh things that i i didn't even think that i wanted on sale but you know you can get an abigail brand uh absalon mercator uh absorbing man all kinds of things so check them out coolstuffinc.com or if you want to go direct to the source you want to go to shop.wizkids.com because you know you like to cut out the middleman you like to go direct like to be direct they've already sold out of their bricksmiths sale that was going on that was a, an update of today or earlier this week. I can't remember which. But uh, they sold out of their brick for brick sale that was going on. But you can still find savings by using code DIALH10 and saving 10% off your Heroclix orders as long as they're not iconics, specialty figures, or pre orders. 
So make sure you use that. Save yourself some money this time of year, especially. Right Oh. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, for everything Hero Clicks, make sure you dial H. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> Not going there. That's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah. six Over people number. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Canada. We have seen the costume. And my bones are.